welcome to the Pocket Gamer Podcast. It's episode number 327. I'm your host, James Gilmore. Joining me today is Harry Slater. Hello. And Peter Winnington. Uh, hello. Reunited after Harry's been gallivanting around the country doing things in expensive areas of planes. Yes, what? that is, yeah. Um, uh, but I, Harry, Harry, you, I mean, bit, <laughs> Harry, you flew in. Um, obviously, we, you did some nice things and went to a nice country, blah, 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 blah. Games, 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 whatever. What is, what is business class like? Yeah. Um, basically, nice ladies say, do you want more of that? Yeah. And 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 it's beer, and you say yes, <laughs> and then and then you get about half, halfway to Latvia, and you say, "Can I have another beer?" And they say, "No, you've drunk them all." <laughs> um, so you have to start drinking whiskey, and then um, and then they give you a duck to eat, but you don't want it, so you just kind of pick at the vegetables around it, and then have some cheesecake. That is quite that's, different that's from business class from our experience. Oh, and also, the um, they've got like trays in the the armrests, some of them, which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, I, I would I would highly recommend. It's like a nine out of ten from me. It's a <laughs> it's a must play. Review that. Harry Slater Gold Award for Business Class. Yeah, no, I'm just in co- economy when I was flying via Canada to get to LA or wherever it was, and yeah. they had the uh, uh, room temperature or cabin temperature down to like minus five centigrade they, or something. They, they do that on internal flights, don't they? They they have they really it super do. super low end, and you're like, I'm going to die. Yeah, that's. That's because you know how the back of your fridge gets warm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they do that to keep business class warm. Oh. So you like you, you economy class scumbags. Um, that's how you are referred to as well in business class. Yeah. Um, I was genuinely freezing my ass off, and I was like, oh, "Hi!" Like ring the thing. Hi. I don't suppose you got one of those little blankets that you that you give out, and they're like, "No." no. And they just, they just buggered off, and I just spent five hours with my, my hands tucked inside my t-shirts, physically shivering, going, yeah. oh, this, is, this is great. Yeah. You've, not, you've not lived in life until you've flown 12 hours to Dubai mm. in economy. Oh, I've done, I've done 11 hours in economy to Colombia. We're just going in opposite directions, but yes, it's an awfully long time. But no one cares about this, do they? Do they? It was for a reason. It was linked to games. You were flying to see a game. Did you see a game, Harry? I saw two games, probably. Can you talk about either of them? I can talk about one of them, I think. <laughs> all right. Well, we can do that later then. Fine. See, look, it was all for a purpose. It's not just all business jollies around these ways, and certainly not for the rest of us, because we just have an economy class and have no blanket. <laughs> cross your road, cross your road's got six new characters. These characters include Rattles and right. a character called 3.1. Which doesn't sound like a character. I think he's a computer, an actual computer, who are apparently both from the upcoming game Shooty Skies, uh, which is a game made by Mighty Games Group, who apparently are linked across your road because they share a couple of developers and directors and things. Um, apparently, though, according to our update, there's a little bug in the game, which means the characters won't come out of the gacha machine at the moment. Right. So you won't get them randomly. They're jammed up there. Yeah, they're stuck up there. You have to put your hand in and then wiggle it about. And then you have to unfold a coat hanger and try and get it. And then you get stuck and you have to call the maintenance guy. And you're like, I wasn't trying to steal. I was just trying to get... The... I just wanted a, a, a bounty. but And I couldn't. And so, nightmare. There apparently is going to be an update next week, though, which will fix the glitch. And you'll get Pac-Man and the ghosts and a bunch of other characters available to you. Or you can buy them individually if you don't want to wait for gacha stuff. I think they're about 79p each if you buy them. But you can just keep playing and playing and playing until the gacha spits them out. Now, we don't usually do great big stories here in the update section, but this requires a bit of explanation. Uh, Peter. Yeah. World of Tanks Blitz has been updated... Yes. With clan support. Yes, it has. So this is version 2.0. It comes with clan support, as you note, and it also comes with new tanks. They've updated some of the like, textures and so forth and the visuals. Like the UI is a little bit more tweakable now, uh, and uh, they've modified a couple of the maps. But the really big thing is, yeah, clans. So this means that you can now make clans and then yes. go into battle with your clans with loads of your mates in a clan, right? Well, James, no. Uh, you. So the first thing what? is that you can only make a clan if you have one million credits oh. available to you, which is a fair <laughs> amount of... I know. Sorry, legit spit take. They one actually million gave credits? us that in business class, so I've got that now. 
Right, okay. Well, Harry's all right, but um, yeah. usual, sort of like chumps like you and I, James, um, a million credits is a fair amount. It's about like a thousand gold, which is the premium currency, uh, mm. or you just chain uh, chain battles. But of course, each battle gives you about 5,000 credits. So it's going to take you a little while to get to that point unless mm. you trade in gold or trade in tanks for gold. Uh, sorry, trading tanks for credits. You also have to have a tier 7, maybe, yeah, I think it's a tier 7 tank. Okay. And then uh, you can go into battle, except, of course, you can't. Um, you can't See, go in with your friends. That's like this. mental. What's the yeah. deal with that? You can create your clan, so you can, so for example, yeah. invite a friend of yours, and they'll become part of your clan, and then another. So you'll have a group of your friends. Oh, no, 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 no. no? So, so you can't actually invite anybody. There isn't the facility to do that in 2.0 at the moment. There's no direct way of inviting someone to your group. You basically just have to say, come and join my clan. Search for... App Spy, and there is a, an App Spy clan now. So you go and search for App Spy, and okay. then you you request to join. You can't actually send an invite out to other people. So you actually have to go to the World of Tanks Blitz forums to actually get other people to join. There's no way of naturally finding such a thing, or or, or to find a clan or anything like that. And then mm -hmm. when you're doing that, you can have up to 50 people in your clan. But there's no way of actually playing with everyone. The only reason that you would want to have a clan is to see who, like, keep track of your mates better, maybe, um, and see who's online a little bit more easily. So is um, it like a little bit having, a, I don't know, a, a Facebook friends list or Twitter feed yes. inside? So you can just yes. say, oh, look, he's played a game. Can't play with him, but he's no, played one. And, and also each person in your clan uh, contributes to your rating as a clan. So if you're... If your win loss rate is, you know, if you're like running sixty one percent win rate or something mm -hmm. like that, then that affects the overall clan rating. Um, but again, there's no way of actually playing with your clan at the moment. It is, it's very strange this update. Like people really, really were asking for clans, and now they're like, oh, we didn't. I mean, we didn't want this. <laughs> no, we no, meant actually. Yeah. It's like, oh, give us clans. All right, here's clans. It's like, do you know what clans are? <laughs> yeah. So. So that's a little bit troubling, um, but it is interesting to see potentially where they're going to go with this in future updates, which of course I'll okay. be able to talk this about. This might be just laying the groundwork for a I future so. thing down the line. Okay, so if you update it, you'll get access to these features. You won't be able to play actual clan-based matches, like Peter says. So a bit of a shame, and it'll cost you a great deal to set it up. So maybe wait till the next update, see if we can actually play with them after that update, and then you can start spending your bucks and setting up your clans and getting yep. into proper fights, hopefully with us, because we've got an apps by clan. As you said, Peter set it up, so come and do battle with us at some point, probably on Twitch as well. So you remember when the Super Meat Boy guys were like, uh, we're never bringing Super Meat Boy to mobile because mobile, lol. Uh, yep. Right? Yeah, remember that? Yep. Right. Yep. So, and then remember how later they went, nah, we will bring it to mobile. Actually, we were just kidding. We'll bring it to mobile and it'll be really good and we'll call it Super Meat Boy forever. Yeah. Yeah. They remember when they you didn't hear anything about that for like two years? Yeah. 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 Well, they popped up back on the radar again saying it is now back in development. <sighs> The guys have been working on other stuff at the moment. So the primary project for one of them has been the Binding of Isaac DLC, which is called Afterbirth. Um, and that's basically done, apparently. And they've been making a bonkers game on PC called Fingered, which I haven't seen yet, but sounds delicious. Slightly rude. <gasps> but now Edmund McMillan, who's uh, one of the two devs responsible, says he's basically now working on Super Meat Boy Forever sort of full time again. So it will be coming to mobile again. Cool. Does anyone care? Well, Super Meat Boy was pretty big, and it I was, think is the operative word. Yeah. I, I think there is room for it if they can make it. And this is where what it comes down to. Like the thing that they complained about the first time when they said, "No, no, we're never going to bring it." They said, "Quote: uh, We got to avoid tacking bad controls onto an existing design." They basically said, "There's no way a touchscreen can replicate the uh, yeah. subtle and precise nature of the controls required to play this game," which, in fairness, is a reasonable criticism. Um, controls coming from like console versions of games onto iOS are troubling, which we might come onto later with the release this week. So, but if things like, for example, Rayman, Jungle Run, and Fiesta Run, and all that have proved, is that you can do running games with really precise jumping in them and make them totally work if you get it right. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping they do something along those lines. Yeah. Did you see them doing that? Yeah. I mean, this could be. I mean, this could be a good game, right? And I, yeah. I, I hope it is, because obviously some people are well into Super Meat Boy, but at the same time, like, Super Meat Boy was, what, what five, six years ago now? Like, mm. I, I don't know, does it have much cultural cachet anymore? 
Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's it's and, has and is a that same, of fondness for the people who played it. Is, and, is that but, same market that's interested in super hardcore, incredibly precise platformers wanting to play that experience on a mobile telephone with such? I mean, there's a, there, there's definitely a, a market for hardcore platformers on on mobile. Yeah, there are quite a lot of hardcore platformers on mobile. Mm. Yeah, okay, I suppose so. I mean, are those same people who played? Super Meat Boy originally, are they gaming on their phone? I don't, I, I don't know. I, I don't I, know. I, let's just wait and see if it actually comes out and then <laughs> we can have this discussion. Yeah. It's a bit up in the air. They said it's not going to be an auto runner or an endless runner or something like that. But I'm hoping they do something which is half and half. So to me, the way to do this would be it runs automatically. You swipe to change direction and you jump uh, by tapping the screen and that's it. Like, yep. to me, that's the only way to do it. If you start trying to do actual directional controls, left, right, up, down, then yes, you're going to hit that same problem that most platformers do on iOS, where it becomes a little bit awkward and you can't get your finger on the right button because there's too many buttons and all that stuff. But I think there is room to do this right. And they're very keen about not muddying their own brand, which is why they were, like, dismissing it in the first place. Say, no, 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 we're not doing that. It's too pure, too pure. Um, but if they're going to do it, I, I reckon they'll do a decent job. But Harry's right. Let's see if it actually arrives this time. Yeah. Um, there's also another game they've been working on called Mugenics, which is, and I'm not lying here, a cat lady simulator. Sweet. Where you get loads of cats and you breed them and you make other weird cats by breeding together different cats and then you have loads of cats. And it's a play on word of the word, like play on word with like eugenics. It is. Yeah. Which yeah. is, yeah. Which is funny. Yeah, it, it is. So, uh, We'll look forward to those two things appearing on mobile sometime in the not too distant future. Now, we were going to be doing a thing about how I Am Bread is going to be coming out, but now it's actually not coming out quite so soon. So, you saw this in Gamescom, didn't you, Peter? I did. We talked about it on the last podcast or so. It was due to be coming out, like, was it next week or the week after? Yeah, it was meant to be coming out, uh, I want to say, yeah, this week coming, Monday, I think it was, or Tuesday or something. And yeah, then we... they were like, nah, JK, nah. LOL. Uh, ruffle. Actually, ruffle copter <laughs> it's actually coming out in september sometime yes that's right so uh we needed to update this because we did mention it on a previous podcast and as it turns out it's now coming out on september the third which is probably for the best because we've got loads and loads and loads of games coming out next week and this week's been really busy so it's all right there's not going to be a lull in the release dates but if you want to see what the game looks like peter went hands-on with it we've got a video up on the site so you can see it running but you won't be able to purchase it until a little bit later than expected so notch that in your character character notch that on your calendar uh if you're interested also upcoming sexy releases the room three the room yeah. three we occasionally check back with uh, Fireproof Studios, don't we? To say, so how's that? How's that Room Three coming along, lads? Could you get, hey? could you get on with that game that we are well excited to play? Please? Uh, yeah, it's, it's where we really want to play that. Can we? Can we play it? Can we play it now? Oh, and, uh, we play it. Hello, you can can play it, we play. We play uh, the we, game. We play the game. <laughs> you can play it, but you can't take any photos of it. But, oh, okay, then. Okay. Uh, so, so we did contact them once again, and this time they came back with an answer. <laughs> yeah. And, and a request to stop speaking in a silly voice. Yeah. So they said, it is, quote, probably a couple of months away from release. So mm -hmm. what I'm guessing is pre-Christmas release date here. So it will come out 2015. All being well, which is nice news, because I really, 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 really want to play it. I'm so excited for this. This is like one of my most anticipated games of the year. Because you're now on board, aren't you? When this I was announced, you board. hadn't even played the first two. No, and were I like room, whatever. And I was like, I should probably like catch up with these. And yeah. then I played them, and I was like, oh my word, these are very good video games. Aren't they? Just now, yeah. Harry's in a better position than all of us. I am he's... the best. Because he's actually played this. I have actually it? played it. Yeah, it was quite ages a while ago, ago, right? Yeah. It was like yeah. a, nearly a year ago. Yeah, and got. I think it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, um... Eurogamer? Yeah, it was, yeah, Eurogamer Expo in the last one in London. Mm. That's when I played it. Yeah, and it's uh, good. It's the room. <laughs> it's the but room it's, on a train. Yeah, well, you start on a train, but then yeah. you go elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you had to highlight that because the hand movements so they yeah. carry into the podcast um, yeah there is an in-depth hands-on that Harry did so you can read all about the beginning of the room if you go over to Pocket Gamer uh, we've got some new screenshots for it up it's obviously little bits of drip fed details right now and nothing too uh, epoch making or groundbreaking but my god I am psyched for this one and uh, with any luck it will be appearing in the next couple of months prior to Christmas that will make me very very happy mm. Yay. When, I, when I saw these screenshots I literally kissed my screen 
That's no, you didn't. Weird. I licked my tongue. Up no, you it. didn't. I did, and then you it, didn't. It, it did. I licked them, and then they, and then I managed to play like a level of it because my tongue interacted with the screen. And You're a liar. Enjoy. You're that. a and dirty it. liar. You're a sexy, this dirty is, liar. Ugh. <laughs> this is why you're not allowed to have any like tech from the company. No, <laughs> you just keeps coming back covered in gob. Drool and ugh, gross. <laughs> I don't want to play the room three anymore. Next, right, FIFA sixteen. So yeah. it's not called FIFA sixteen actually. So already that headline is wrong. I'm going to take Mark Brown to task on this. It's called FIFA Mobile. That is the new version of FIFA. We talked about this on the podcast as well. And I did a video comparing FIFA 15 to FIFA 16. So go and check it out. Actually, some quite obvious visual differences and changes in the engine. Well worth a look if you are into the whole FIFA thing. But we were curious about this because um, EA had to basically explain to us why our version of FIFA, this new one coming up, FIFA Mobile as it's called, September 22nd, it's going to be released, doesn't have any female characters in it. When mm. the console think, version, why are we calling does. them female characters? That's a bit weird. They're not characters, are they? They're they're footballers. They're real people. They're, they're lady, not. Lady they're, 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 yeah, they're not. They're not played by actors. They are lady footballers. Characters is no. They're just players. I would still refer to characters as in they, no. in, in a video game. No, they're not characters. I would call. I would call. Um, Otherwise, it sounds Wayne... like Messi's literally walked into the middle of your game and be like, "All right, that's what he does." Uh, yeah, that's no, he does it. But like, I would it's a bunch call of Rooney a character. Oh, he's a character. He's Isn't hard. he? Because he, 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 I'm not going to say that out loud. No. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, that lawsuit so, hasn't gone through. And the reason we asked because there was a yeah. bit of scuttlebutt going on where on the consoles, what happens is FIFA is going to get the women's international teams for the very, yeah. very first time. So awesome. you get 12 teams; they'll be playable. That's grand. They'll also be on the game's box in US, uh, in Canada, and in Australia. Difference is, on the mobile version, it's just going to be the standard dudes-only thing. So we asked them why that might be. Now, tell me what you think of the answer. So EA okay, said, go on. Go on. the mobile version is based exclusively on FIFA Ultimate Team, mm -hmm. which is that bit of the FIFA game which lets you transfer and players and stuff and move them around between teams. And because it lets you do that, hire and transfer players to build your own squad, mm -hmm. and women's and men's teams don't compete against one another... Mm. that means it wouldn't work. Mm. So, therefore, no girls allowed. So, so the argument there, of course, is that there's no realism, right? Like, the argument is, well, men and women don't play against one another. So in, it would be unrealistic. It, so it would yeah. be unrealistic. It's because they I mean, can't have the same because, changing room because yeah, there'd just be uh, boobs and willies everywhere. Yeah, it would be. and no just one a, wants... Just a, a blur of genitals. Just, mixed, yeah. Mismatched genitals. That just yeah. sounds icky. But um, isn't, the, isn't FIFA Ultimate Team, isn't it also possible to get the classic 1967 Brazilian football team available to players? What, you mean a load of people who are probably dead now? Yeah... And then uh, add them to your team. Yeah, and, and, and then have and, them play for like Norwich like, FC. Yeah. And have players on both teams that are the same person. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yes, that, the, yeah. The realism that, argument mm. does start to fall down a bit there, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Also, <laughs> also, it's a video game. So, yeah. I mean. So it's, so it's like. It's like, I mean, I can totally see why they're not doing it. Like, I can see that the reasoning is, well, you know women and men just don't play one another and I mean that's another bigger question as to how football itself handles itself but I mean ultimately this is EA saying gender equality oh unrealistic time travel totally yeah. possible <laughs> exactly so, football powered time travel haven't you haven't you done it before I was I was only there last week going back and talking to insert old football player here Baggio, Roberto, Roberto Gaza. Baggio, Gaza. <laughs> I don't think anyone can talk to Gaza. He's on a different plane of existence. Yeah. Yeah. Ian Rush. He has Ian, travelled yes, through Ian time. Rush. He's travelled through time, met himself in the past, caused a paradox, and had a had an event. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, whatever you think of that excuse or not, who knows? The point is, though, because of the way they're doing this, this FIFA mobile app, it's not going to be a new app every year. It's going to be constantly updating. So technically, at any point, they could just drop in a bunch of female players, not characters, if they wanted to, and then bam, it would be mm. updated with it. So it's not the end of the conversation. They may well bring it in later, especially if it proves popular on the console. So, you know, might not, might not necessarily the end of the world there. But it's out on September the 22nd, if you want to go and get it, called FIFA Mobile, and obviously we'll be covering it when it goes 
Live, live, live. Live, live. Out and about this week. I was considering saving this for the end, but I'm not going to because it's too big and we're not going to gloss over it for the next 25 minutes. Final Fantasy VII came out on mobile today. Hooray! So... It kind of came out of the blue a little bit. We'd known that it was coming to iOS, but uh, Square hadn't given us a release date, and, and it just appeared in the uh, New Zealand App Store, and we went, oh, that's interesting. Mm, I suppose we should do some coverage on that. And so we did. We arrived uh, in this morning and grabbed a copy of the game. Uh, myself and Peter and Danny sat down handling the initial hands-on let's talk about what the differences are, while Harry downloaded it and played it all bloody day. No, I didn't. Didn't you? All right, fine. No. You're supposed to <laughs> Slacker. No, Mark well. told me to do something else instead. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Well, uh, we have had a bash at it. Uh, we can tell you a few basic details first. Firstly, £11.99 is what it's going to cost you, or $15.99. Thems be the prices. Uh, you're going to need to have 2 gig free on your device, your iPad or your iPhone. It is universal and will work on both. You also need to have 4 gig free in order to do the install. So, yeah. As, as I think Danny points out when we were talking, it's technically bigger than the original game, which mm. came on three discs. Yeah. So that's it's, interesting. That's an achievement. I've played it. Peter's played it. Harry apparently hasn't played it. No, but I can just, like, piggyback on one of your opinions. But you have played, presumably, the original game. I have finished the original game possibly twice. So that's, there like, you go. that's about one of three games I've ever actually completed. Mm. Well then, let us chat about this new version. Uh, let us talk positive stuff first, as we did before. Um, the look is okay, I think. It is based largely on the PC version. Yes, up, up Yes, um, the up resed up sexied version. It's it's HDified, but they haven't really done anything with the actual it's, yeah. textures. Just sort of no. smoothed the edges. Yep. Smooth. Correct. So you're not going to find any super high definition textures or anything like that. Uh, it's just a little bit less jaggy. Uh, and if you were to play it on a PC and put it side by side, it looks pretty much the same. It's very similar. Uh, we've got a little bit of a boost in terms of a few features. Like when you get into battles, as Danny noticed and I played it, it was like, yeah, he's right. When you go into a random encounter and it goes, that happens a little bit quicker. The transition's a bit smoother because I spent a long time last night until half one in the morning, in fact, getting my PS3 to work with my Elgato so I could bypass the HDCP stuff, which took longer than I thought it would, uh, in order to play the original version of Final Fantasy VII uh, on my PS3, even going to the lengths of downloading the US version of the game so it ran at 60 hertz instead of 50 and mm. filled the screen. Uh, so I've very, very recently played it and uh controls well i mean as 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 people see in the video you know like the controls are a much better take on those tank controls that actually happened in the original you know like you had that you had that press forward to like press up to move forward and then left and right to wheel your body around like a tank he he, he actually does run to points of the compass in it having played it last yeah. night he actually does it's not tank in that sense that you turn around on your your heels without moving like like you used to but you do have to use the d-pad and it's kind of very awkward and the other annoying thing is that you have to press x to run if you want to scoot mm. about otherwise he automatically defaults I mean, to walking was in final fantasy 7 pre um dual shot uh, yes, so, I think I mean, it was. I mean, you didn't have much choice. No, uh, so it was it was, was digital. It? Yeah, 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 it was. It was yeah. on the PS. It was PSX, it was P it was PS1. PS1, so, and, and the, the DualShock didn't ship straight away with the... It was no. it came out afterwards. You had to mm. buy it separately. Um, and I had one of the first dual analog ones. I think it didn't even have the shocky stuff in it. It just had analogs. Um, yeah, so the controls for moving your character around actually feel a little bit lighter and easier... But that is the only bit about the controls that feels better. Because what they've done here, as you'll see from the video if you watch it, is basically overlaid every single PlayStation button in the way that you would do if you were using it on an emulator. Thanks, Square Enix. You know what games is good, you knobs. So, um, have we got video of this running? Oh, yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll bang it up. I haven't changed it. It's a good point. People are going, where is it? Yeah. So here you go. Here you go, people in the Twitch feed. Okay. If, you're, if you're watching live, you can see this running. This is what the game looks like. And if you look at those little ghosty white icons saying things like R1 and R2 and XYB, those are the buttons we're talking about. So there are 15 buttons on screen. 
So there's 15 buttons on screen. There's... 15! There, yep. it's, it's presented in 4-3 rather than 16-9. Mm-hmm. So original um, aspect ratio, which I don't mind, because I think that's fine. They've changed the textures. They've not up-resed anything in that manner. They've... One might argue they've not really done a lot to it. They've they've no. kind of just maybe I mean maybe. Are you suggesting, Peter, that they've just stuffed out a, a slightly inferior part with controls bodged on the top of it to try and I make mean, as much money as possible? I mean that's partly it, but what I'm also sort of suggesting is that maybe what they've done is built not a Final Fantasy version that runs on iOS but a Final Fantasy emulator that runs on iOS. Sick burn. Maybe that's why it's bigger. It feels well, like they've got the ROM and they've bunged it inside a wrapper and then yeah. off you go. Now, they haven't done a bad job with the emulation. But that makes sense, right? Because if they can get Final Fantasy VII out there, hooray, huzzah, more people playing Final Fantasy VII, blah, blah, blah. And it's got MFI controller support, so I guess if you're going to play with an MFI controller, if you're planning to do that, then all of this stuff about the touch controls is kind of moot. But it also means that... a and nine are really easily ported now. I guess so. If you if you want to play through eight or nine again, Wait, I mean, stop, stop nine's it. good. Nine's good. Nine's really good. Eight's, eight's not good. Eight's, eight's got some rubbish. interesting existential eight's stuff. Rubbish. In it. It's rubbish. It's not eight's existential. Weird. It's whining. Let's be honest. <laughs> no, everything is. <laughs> but then there's also there's also there's also um, my sword is a gun. <laughs> but there's also vagrant story, which would be. Easily ported as well. Yeah, but if they, if, if I don't want it, if they just do this, this is not what I was after. Now, yeah, but like, yeah, but they don't, they don't care about you, James. <laughs> they, no, I know, I know. Square Enix is is catering to Square Enix fans, and this is this is the port. This is the port of Final Fantasy VII that Square Enix fans deserve. But like, <laughs> but weirdly, they did. Why do they deserve treat... it? What have they done wrong? <laughs> they did treat Final Fantasy VI with a good deal more like respect. They did a new version of Final Fantasy VI where they did go in and controversially changed the visuals and made them more HD in a way that I actually don't like as much, but they did go in and go hey, okay, we're going to readdress this, we're going to update the visuals and we're going to completely change the control system so that you tap on the actual attacks within the screen. They made a touchscreen interface for it so that when you were doing the active time battles the menu would kind of scroll up from the bottom mm. of the screen and would work as a timer and then you tapped on the thing that you wanted and that was like you're good you've, you've actually gone back yeah. and changed the mechanics yeah. to fit and, mobile and that was a lot more work oh, well apparently because this time they just they just haven't it is literally like playing a ROM uh, on an emulator on Android or something which again hands up if you're playing this with an MFI controller you are going to really have a great time and there's extra stuff I, in here that's I can't play kind of... things with it though because my Tablet just falls over. <laughs> well, well, yeah, this is this is the thing. But I mean, if you hook this up to a television and get your controller on, and I mean, yeah. I'm tempted yeah, to do that, that. That makes a load of sense to download it on your iPad, hook it up to your TV, and then use your MFI controller. Because there's no simpler way to do that, is there, Peter Willington? <laughs> you devil's advocate, you. <laughs> <laughs> so. There, it's obviously a little bit problematic. It's not quite the port that I think anybody was really hoping for. However, let's couch all that by saying you can now play Final Fantasy VII on your mobile phone. That counts for something. And certainly, like you say, Square Enix fans will buy it no matter what, no matter how expensive it is, which it is, and you could buy it a lot cheaper on your PSN or on your PC. Uh, and even though it's got inferior controls like it does, because those R1 and R2 and L1 buttons at the top of the screen are ridiculous, yeah, people are going to do it anyway. The other thing, quickly, yeah, you can turn the random encounters off. So you Explain know how you're jogging along and you get going yeah. upstairs and suddenly the screen goes, yeah. and then you fight a thing. You can turn that game bit of the game off right. so you don't have so, to fight anything anymore so you'll only so, fight the major boss battles right and then what happens when you've when you get to those boss battles and then you're hideously under leveled then ah. you click the button that lets you go straight up to top level precisely so you don't have to you basically don't have to do anything anymore because no, you there, didn't <laughs> doesn't i'm sure it hasn't oh you just get yeah just get knights of the round and have that and then put knights of the round on and then go have a sandwich <laughs> there is a stat max button you press it all your stats go max on your way i think these are concessions to try and make it more easy to play on mobile so you don't have to spend as much time doing the little faffy buttons the other thing which we didn't even talk about in the video that we did was the fact that there's supposed to be a cloud save option <laughs> so you can, yeah and apparently that's not really working so at the moment people oh. you still have to go and save 
on the actual save crystal things you can't just stop it and then pick it up again because it won't remember and that's great this is yeah so, again roms let you yeah. just close them up and open so, them up so again. the concessions that square enix has given for the mobile part of final fantasy 7 is you don't have to play it and if you do play it you can't save so well done everyone involved this is just magnificent yeah yeah so yes so, so a few issues there but again that's not going to stop all the people who uh, so someone's in the chat room going wait that wasn't a joke there really is a button yes, that, that just levels you up yep. yes that no we're deadly serious go and watch the video you can see the button on the screen when we go and have a look at it yeah it's a bit weird so mixed feelings about it but underneath that underneath all this like the control issue and everything it's still the same game it runs just fine so if you're really smart and for it you don't have another way to play final fantasy 7 you don't have a ps3 or something to go and play it on or a pc then this is a perfectly acceptable yes. way of doing it yes 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 yeah, we are being snobs about this because this is this is a legendary, genre-defining video game touchstone, and they've just gone, chuck it in an emulator, skin it up, it'll be fine. Yeah, and then charge people twelve quid for it. So there you go, twelve pounds, no, eleven pounds, slightly nine or fifteen dollars ninety nine. It's out right now. You can see videos for it up on Pocket Gamer, and I'm sure we'll have a review going on for it as well in the not too distant future. Okay, moving on. Horizon Chase, people. That's out now, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to talk about that later, though, James. So I that's the one I said you were going to talk about, and you're like, no, I haven't played any games. No, there you go. That's the one I played. All right, fine, cool. Well, yeah, talk about that later. Good, because I want to talk about it, because we've all played this, and yes, things to talk about. Dungeons of the Endless is out as well. I played this. Peter's played this. I think this is quite good. What do you reckon, Peter? I think you're very right. I think it is a very good game. Uh, it is a dungeon crawler. You crash onto a planet with a spaceship and then you've got to go and explore all these different locations with this crew. And then uh, as you do so, you try and find an exit where you actually have to take a crystal from your ship to that exit. Mm -hmm. You blast things, you shoot things. Uh, it's a bit like a roguelike in that, that you don't really get told a lot of what you're meant to be doing. Uh, but as you're moving through the thing and you're blasting your aliens, you level up. Uh, you've got to keep rooms lit because there's like a darkness and light mechanic whereby if the, if a room is dark then more enemies can come and kill you and obviously you don't want that. And then you've also got to build out these little pods like industry and science and food so that you can level up and build new things and research new technologies and so forth. It's really, really intense. Came from Steam and uh, was in early access for a while and now this iPad version is out with modified interesting uh, UI changes that, that actually make it play quite well. Yeah. Um, it's good, isn't it? I, I liked it, yes. I was playing it and I, I dove straight in. I didn't have a clue what I was doing and I was just good getting stuff. confused and lost. And there were loads of mechanics I didn't understand. And I was like, what's going on? And I died three times. And by the end of the hour, I was all like, yep, yep. I'm totally on board with this. This is fun. It's got that FTL element to it where you can see the exposed innards of your craft from the top down. And then you're wandering through these rooms. Every time you wander into a room, it lights up uh, when you open the door. And that counts as a turn. If you wander out of that room without lighting it, you use this kind of yellow gas stuff that you collect to keep the room lit. If you walk out of the room and leave it in darkness nasty things will spawn in there. So the idea is to light up as much as you can to find that exit, like Peter said. And then, if you played Monster Hunter, it's like when you go and try and gather those eggs or rocks or something, you have to take them back to the gathering point without getting killed along the way. That's the end of each level. So you have to run back, get your crystal out of your ship, and then take it to that exit. But the problem is, the moment you do that, the moment you pick up that crystal, every door in the complex opens. Mm. And if there are dark rooms in there, aliens will come and munch you while you're trying to get away, and you'll die back to the beginning. Lots going on in it. I am I am fond. I'm going to carry on playing it. Uh, it is £3.99 or $4.99. Like Peter said, it came from PC and I think was well received there. Dungeon of the Endless, it's called, and I think it's well worth a look if you're up for it. Along with The Guides. Am I the only person who's played The Guides? Yeah. Okay, so it's a game I was talking about in the podcast before. It is a uh, puzzle game in which you are trying to decipher a bunch of extremely cryptic codes uh, on a single screen, level by level basis. So there are ultimately hundreds of these things, and it's quite tough from the outset. Lots of cryptic puzzles involving uncoding binary and you're presented with these strange different very kind of abstract and obscure puzzles where it's just like layers of stuff on a screen and you've got a whole bunch of ones and zeros and numbers and different colors and they're like there you go there's no like do this to do this or now can you unlock this it just presents you with a bunch of stuff and you're expected to go um and just start stabbing things until you work out how to get around it which to some people might seem very obscure and frustrating and it can get frustrating in the later levels but 
I actually think it's quite good. It assumes you have a certain modicum of intelligence and or ingenuity to try and get around these things. And when you do complete them, I think it's very satisfying when you go, mm. yes, suss that out, I did. It's also presented very nicely. It has the same presentation style of something like a device six, different gameplay mechanics, but the look is very much there. It looks a little bit Samogo. If you go to the actual site itself, it's only made by two people, I believe, who developed it. It's also a very slick and lovely website and the app and they kind of fit together. There's also a companion app which serves as a compendium piece which gives you information about the clues and a lot of background into the sort of sub story that runs underneath it all again that's a little bit samogo i think and year walk did that very same trick so uh i think i've taken influence from a good source here it's tough later on if you don't like weird obscure puzzles and you don't like being left just to deal with it and you get no tutorials people under the video went what no tutorial screw this which is the opposite reaction i tend to have which is no tutorial awesome bring it yeah, on yeah. so it depends on what you're into uh, but i would recommend taking a look at it it's called the guides plural uh, which is not great for seo or whatever and it's currently only 79p or 99 cents it's half price for launch so if you like your puzzlers i would suggest checking it out because it's kind of cool oh yes now then um has everyone played pac-man 246 uh, i might be playing uh, i might be talking about this later actually all right, I will leave it be then. We've got a big old list of uh, things what also came out this week. So, Sheepers, I played it. It's a jumpy game where you take control of a sheep and you jump over some fences and you jump over some more fences and it's like a, an auto runner score chaser thing like Flappy Bird, only it's jumpy sheep. Um, and it's it's nothing. It's from Ketchup, the guys who made 2048 and... and Every game I, ever. I, I was about to say a word that rhymes with roll but begins with st uh oh, mom, but i'm not going to say mom, that mom. i'm not going to say that it's a, they made train 48 which seemed to be heavily inspired bites fist by threes so uh screw them also what else have we got on this little list oh ace maverick here's a game here's a game that looks very flashy indeed so uh apparently you take control of a heavily armed helicopter and you run around arctic landscapes protecting spy ships supply ships rather and shooting down hostile stuff so it's a third person shooty shooty you know after burnery stuff uh it looks all right graphically i haven't actually played this one yet so i can't say whether it is any good but i think we're going to go hands-on with it because it's a bit flashy and splody people like it ace maverick it's quite expensive though three pound 99 or four dollars 99 if you want to give it a go sky gamblers rise of glory carrying on with the uh, flight sim thing there's another one of those uh it was apparently the first sky gamblers game they relaunched it because Namco removed it from the store when they were the publisher for it. What? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I've now played, they've... Yeah, I've played that. It's quite good. Yeah, have you? Is it all right? Yeah, it's a good flying around shooting stuff game if you like them. All the Sky Gamblers games are good, actually. They're not bad, um, are they? Yeah, yeah. Like for, I mean, it's a bit fiddly because it's a flight sim-ish on your, on your phone or tablet. But no, it's worth a look. Have a look if you like that sort of thing. Yeah. Especially being at the moment, it is free. Ooh. So I don't know how they're doing the free to play in that, but maybe worth a look. As as you say, it's not too bad. We've probably got a review of it up on the site actually, because it's old and we've played it. So have a look there. There was a game called Cube, K U B E, all capitals, which is basically a, very similar to the Sheep's game, where you're a little pixel dot. You saw me playing this, Peter, where you're just bouncing from dot to dot. There's like a series instead of a bridge or a pathway, there's a series of very small dots and you have to leap from dot to dot to dot to dot. Uh, mm. It jumps automatically and then you have to put your finger on the screen to go down in a very firm, uh, tiny wings sort of way. But the amount, the area that you're aiming for is very, very, very small. So it's incredibly tricky, incredibly quickly. It's free to play, but you can pay to remove the ads if you want to. It looks fine. It, you know, another score chaser. It's not awful, but it's not exactly overwhelmingly awesome either. So little bit of a shrug for that one, I suppose. Um, is there anything else that I've missed that seems super sexy to people um, that we're not talking about? And, and didn't um, Frozen Synapse Prime come out? Oh, did it? I think no. so. It was meant to come out. It was um, meant to, but it didn't. Oh, on well. iOS? Yeah. It's been, yeah, I've been waiting for that for a little while. I know it's available on uh, Vita at the moment, isn't it? Prime's uh, been available for a while yeah. on Vita. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. So those are probably the ones that are worth talking about, apart from the ones we're going to chat about over on Throne at Games. Come sit upon the throne of games. Harry, let's not bury the lead. Tell us all about the game you've been playing. 
I have been playing Horizon Chase, which I called several different names today because I kept <laughs> forgetting what it was called because it's a very generic name. Peter did that as well. Yeah. Peter called it Horizon Rush to me. Yeah. And I was like, Rush. that's, yeah, that's, that's not what you is it? Yeah, I'm no. sorry, everybody. It, 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 you're you, right. It's true. It's horrific. But do you know why I called it Horizon Rush? Because you're a big stinky jerk. No, I mean, mostly that, but because it reminded me of a game called Rush Horizon. Horizon. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate that, isn't it? Mm. Uh, but less unfortunate is the game itself, right, Harry? It's really, 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 really good. Isn't it, though? It is. It's so good. It's one of the best races I have played on my mobile tablet computing device. Mm. <laughs> um, it's, it's really slick. It's retro, but in mm. a really modern way, if that makes any sense, which it doesn't. But I said it anyway. Um, and you, you can't drive, go back you, now. I can't, no. There is no turning back. You drive a car through some other cars. You start at the back of the grid and then basically have to overtake all the other cars uh, in a set number of laps. This really simple controls. You've got an accelerator button, and mm -hmm. if you lift your finger up, you brake. Uh, you can tap left on the left button to go left. Yep. Uh, and you can probably figure so out how to far. turn right. <laughs> Um, there's also a nitro boost that makes you go real fast, which is good mm. because sometimes you just want to go even faster than you are going. Yes. Um, it's sort of globe trotting as well. There's sort of, they're, they're not real locations, but that, you know, there's the golden gate bridge in it and, and mm. sort of, so, I mean, they are real locations, but you won't find these racetracks there. So don't go and look for them. No, that would be mental. Um, and it's just really, really, really good. It's really fast. And the the problem I've, I often have with iOS races is that, that everything gets spread out so quickly. Either you, either they're too easy and you get to the front, or they're too mm. difficult and you're stuck at the back. But this is like every second of the three or five laps that you're doing, you are engaged with other cars in one way or another. So mm. overtaking or holding your position or trying not to drive into things. So, and it's it, it's really exciting. Like to the point where there were some bits where I was just screaming obscenities <laughs> when I crashed into a pole just before the last corner and some jerk overtook me. Um, Jerks. I played uh, this back at E3, but it was on an Android device, so I couldn't capture it at the time. Yeah. And being an Amiga owner, this immediately took me back to, and Peter and I were reminiscing about this, back to Lotus Esprit, yep. Turbo Challenge, that's yep. what it is, back yep. to Jaguar XJ220, the not as good game, but it looked good at the time. The, the Jaguar looked amazing, so that yeah, was really, It really reminded cool. me a bit of Chase HQ. Yes, Chase but, HQ but and OutRun. The, you know, and the violence. Those old-fashioned 16-bit ones, which has got the parallel yeah. scrolling in the background and the vertical slices across the road where it's grey, dark grey, grey, yeah. dark grey, grey. And it's just like, oh, I remember this. They even got the guy who did the music for Lotus 3 to do the music for this. It's Yeah, it is just a lovely package. Everything yeah. about it is just filled with such joy. And the skies are all nice and blue. <laughs> and then sometimes it snows and it's oh it's snowing now and it's it's got a couple of problems just teeny problems it gets a bit grindy mm -hmm. um because you, you need to unlock better cars to um to like compete in later races and so you have to go back and um do the same tracks and races again to get higher up the leaderboard to unlock new cars and stuff but I didn't mind it, that grind, because it was like, uh, my car's slightly more powerful now, so I'm going to overtake y'alls. And then it's a I shame. Did. It's a shame they ruined it with all that free-to-play mechanic. Uh, oh, no, wait, it's brilliant! How good um, is that? It's, yeah. yeah, it is. If, if, if you only buy one game this week, then buy this game. Yes, which is a strange thing to say when Final Fantasy VII is out. Yeah. But true. Yeah. Maybe there buy Final Fantasy for your Vita. I think it's out on Vita. That's right. Probably. So that is Horizon Chase, everybody. No, yep. not Chase Horizon, no, not Rush no. Chase, Horizon Rush. Yep. Horizon Chase. Yep. Uh, it's a little it's a little beauty. Uh, it's available premium right now. I don't know exactly how much it costs. I think yes, it's I do. Th £2.29. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was going to say. Nice. Or $2.99. The Android edition, incidentally, is on the way. I know that because I played it. So don't fear. It's coming your way. And it's a cracker. So go and have a look right now. Peterino. 
What is up, Jamesy Gilmore? I'd like to talk with you about this one because I've played this a bit and I played it more after the Twitch stream, so I think we'll do a twofer. Um, okay. We're the, sitting on the couch together again. Yeah, that's right. Let's let's snuggle. And then possibly, yeah, if it goes right. well, it'll transfer into a spoon. Oh, no. So, uh, Pac-Man 256 then, eh? Yeah. So, it's um, Crossy Pac-Man. Yes, it is Crossy Pac-Man. Uh, it feels like... It feels like... Somebody went back in time, say, for example, uh, the developers of FIFA games, uh, and they they went, oh, we, let's get take this Pac-Man designer and bring him into the future and then keep him in a room and then say to him, you're not allowed to play anything else except for modern mobile video games. Now, you've not actually made Pac-Man before, but now we know that you've got this idea for Pac-Man in your head. Now make a pac make your game and call it Pac-Man. And then they he makes it, and then he, ta they take him back into the past. And then what uh, are you talking about? <laughs> that's uh, like, Pac-Man slash fic. What are you? This, like that's, even for you, this is drivel. That is. That <laughs> and is, then Pac-Man had sex with Sonic and oh, that man. guy from Twilight. Gotta go fast, he says. So basically, <laughs> um, it feels like a really modern version of Pac-Man, and because of that, it's kind of crossed with Crossy Road. Like it, 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 you are moving up the screen constantly. There is something always chasing you, just swiping on the screen up, down, left, and right to swipe in different directions. Yep. You're munching pills as you do this, um, trying to get high scores. You can get up to a two five six multiplayer. Uh, hence the name. Also, there's another reason for the name. I'll tell you that in a second when we'll nerd out about how old arcade games didn't work. Um, mm. And uh, you, you know, you get these uh, power pellets, and those allow you to eat the ghosts, as you would expect. But you've got to keep moving up the screen. You've got to keep going. Um, and it's an endless, you know, an endless action muncher. arcade game in that way. <laughs> yes, an endless muncher. Um, all of the different ghosts have different AI, which is something that was supposedly in the original version of Pac-Man, even though the designers have said quite explicitly it, that's not true. But everyone um, just superimposed, or Blinky moves really fast, you see, because yeah. Uh, yeah, I like to impose my own human characteristics onto little ones and zeros. Exactly. So, um, yeah, basically... Um, uh, each of them has kind of different things like uh, Pinky will sort of sit there and not really move anywhere and if you walk if you sort of whack 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 past their position then they'll come after you um so uh, the other thing Pac-Man 256 the reason it's 256 is because the old arcade game you would get to level 256 and then the game would destroy itself because nobody really intended you to get to level 256 but some nerds sat in a basement for years of their lives wasting their the precious few hours they have on this planet trying to get a higher school than one another and found out that that's that's what happens when you get to that point so um, tell me again about the entire history of king of fighters peter <laughs> you loser so anyway so what uh, happens is as you're moving up the screen like he said that the 256 thing where the game would crash basically that crash is chasing you up the screen if you stop yeah. for a minute and just go left and right and left and right you'll see ones and zeros and everything going blah, 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 a kind of tidal wave of like binary nonsense sweeping up to engulf you so you do have to keep pushing up it's got the isometric look as well so it's not top down like mm -hmm. traditional pac-man it's kind of at that angle same angle as crossy road which is where you can see the crossover and it's got that faux 3d thing where it's all blocky it looks brilliant actually I, yeah, I, it looks, uh, looks And looks it plays fantastic. really well. You just swipe in each direction and he goes yeah. in that direction and what's your, exactly what you think. What's your high score, James? I'm opening up my phone I've right now. I've got no idea what, what, my high score is. what my high score is. I'm going to find out what it is and then show off what it is. I'll tell you what, while I'm my doing that... I probably deleted it to put Final Fantasy on it. <laughs> oh, God. While, while, um, uh, while I'm trying to find it, what I'll tell you is that intro music, that intro sting of... Oh, yeah, yeah. That is so cool. Like, the actual <laughs> dubstepy, like, slight tweak and remix of that that song it sounds amazing and that that wha the wacka 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 we were talking about this on the yeah. stream the other day it sounds like really like robotic and and like android-esque yeah. okay. it's really <laughs> meh, meh. and it's like, and it's really nicely done we could be very cynical about this because it's another free-to-play game it's obviously springboarding off both the pac-man license and the success of crossy road so like let's fuse these two things and mm. make a million dollars so it could be really really horrible but it's not. There but is. It's, it's free to play, and there are credits in it. So you have six credits at the yeah. beginning. Once you've lost six lives, you are locked out until the credits refill. But mm -hmm. yeah. there is a free play mode, which you can play as many times as you want. The difference in that mode is there are no power ups. So as you munch through, you can get power ups that allow you to, you know, eat for ghosties or change Pac-Man in a funny way and make him massive or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that's available in this in the normal mode of the game. But costing uh, playing that mode costs you credits but if you just want to play constantly for free uh mm. with no energy timers timing you out or anything 
Free play credits, mode will do it. The credits do reset themselves, and there is an, yes. a way to basically turn this into a paid game as well. So um, you can just buy a thing that means that you get infinite credits. Um, uh, so oh, really? my score That's is good. yeah, my score is two thousand one hundred and forty-seven. Nice. I deleted mine. Right. Well, my joke. score is um, twenty-one thousand and sixty-three. Right. So uh, I don't believe you. And um, I don't care. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I don't so, care. I flew business class. So, I mean, there is screw you, plebs. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a really, really neat, really, really neat um, take on the on the license. I think that it's, the, the best. This is the bravest for thing they've done. Such a yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this but, is the bravest they've 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 been with Pac Man since Championship Edition, and because there have been a lot of these really rubbish now. auto runner left to right apps where they turn him into this kind of like leggy manga character, like hi, I'm Pac Man, I'm Pac Man, not... and I've got a story, even though I really don't, and no one cares. No, no. it's like we're trying to make him Sonic, and it's like this isn't this isn't good. But this feels like the original Pac Man. It also feels a bit like Crossy Road. It's got a pretty generous free to play system, not quite as generous as Crossy Road, but that free play mode is a godsend if you just want to carry on for nothing. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. Actually, it's good. They've done. They've done good. Fair play to you lot. There's also a bloody great big guide that Mark has done it, which you can see on the stream right now, where he goes through each of the characters, tells you about all the power ups that you can get, how best to gain them and use them, and a bunch of other tips as well. So do check it out if you need Crossy Road helping hands. We've got you covered. Mm. All right, let's knock it on the head. Thank you everybody for listening to us today, and we'll see you next week for more mobile gaming news and. Views. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.